Welcome to part two of Early Americans and Oceania. Now we're going to take a look at Early American cultures. The earliest of Mesoamerican cultures that emerged uh, took place sometime around 1200 BCE, and we refer to them as the Olmec civilization. Right, they settled along a region of the east coast of Mexico around where modern day Veracruz and Tabasco are. Uh, and many aspects of their civilization remains really kind of a mystery uh, to us, or at least are debated, right? The Olmecs are often characterized though as the mother of all civilization cultures there in Central and Southern America, right? They established a lot of models that will be copied by these other cultures like pyramid building, the use of the calendar and other artistic pursuits, right? Almost all that we know about the Olmecs is derived from archeological evidence, right? There are no textual historical accounts. Remember when I talked about things like archeology span versus documentation. The Olmecs did have a writing system, but we can't decipher it. Uh, and so we, uh, we have only really the archeology span in which to rely upon, right? Uh, because of that, of course, we, uh, don't know a whole lot about Olmec domestic life. We have a lot of archeological evidence that shows that they uh, created these huge ceremonial centers. Uh, and we have a lot of, uh, of art and stuff that uh, is, was created by them, but nothing really that gives us an insight on what day-to-day -day life was like, right? The most uh, uh, famous of the ceremonial centers was a place called La Venta, right? It was constructed on a north-south axis, paying careful attention to the geometry and astro uh, uh, the, uh, um, the astronomical uh, uh, alignments with that, right? Uh, it is, uh, has a large earthen pyramid at its center, about 300 feet tall, tall, and it's surrounded by, again, geographically aligned smaller step pyramids, right? Uh, buried in the main courtyard are slabs of jade and granite and serpentine, which uh, have carved on them uh, monsters and jaguar heads. And the inter interesting thing about these carvings is that uh, they uh, are not meant to be seen. They were buried right after they were created. So they serve some other purpose besides being uh, an adornment, right? Also buried along with those uh, slabs are offerings like jade axes and things like that, right? Um, it's not known what sort of rituals were performed by the Olmecs uh, there, um, but it does suggest when you take a look at these, uh, these, at these creations that they were designed by very skillful uh, engineers and uh, engineers that clearly had a large labor force at their disposal, right? Uh, the most, Impressive of the Olmec uh, artifacts are probably these mysterious, like in the picture here, uh, you see here, these mysterious colossal baby face basalt heads, right? Uh, these things uh, are six to nine feet tall. There's about 25 of them known to have survived. And the speculation is that these are probably carvings of Olmec kings. Now they all have this general look about them. They have this kind of generic look, except that they'll have certain features that'll show, you know, scars or a gap in the teeth that that show that they represent actual individuals, right? Um, another form of Olmec art that we often see are statues of jaguar were babies eating their mothers while nursing, right? Uh, a later Mesoamerican uh, origin myth says that a jaguar had mated with a woman who gave birth to a baby that ate her as uh, as it was nursing. And this eventually, this uh, after ate her, it eventually became the first rulers of, of the peoples, right? Um, some scholars actually suggest that these massive heads are part of this ruler, rulers based on that myth, right? Uh, the Olmecs developed extensive trade networks. Right, they traded basalt and obsidian and iron ore. They traded all the way as far as Mexico's west co coast and far south as modern day Costa Rica, right? Jade was considered a very precious material in Mesoamerican culture, right? Uh, a lot of jade came from the region around Guatemala. 
uh, jade was such a prized possession that it was more valuable than gold. Gold was actually not that important. And in fact, later conquistadors like Hernando Cortez would actually trade pieces of green glass for gold because to the uh, Native American uh, cultures there, they found that green glass more valuable than the gold, right? Uh, Olmec gods are typically half human, half supernatural creatures, right? Myths and religious symbols uh, provide uh, prototypes of later Mesoamerican uh, deities and religious beliefs. The Olmecs played a ceremonial ball game, which uh, will become widespread in the region and adopted by other cultures, right? Uh, and by at least 600 BCE, the Olmecs had created some of the first known form of writing in Mesoamerica. These were a form of crude hieroglyphic uh, 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 glyphs, right? A, a hieroglyphic system that uh, many scholars say are, are the forerunner of the Mayan glyphs. But like I said, we can't decipher any of them, so we can't get any of the insights of what they actually say. Okay. Um, the Olmecs are credited with creating the first calendars, right, in Mesoamerica. And the applications for these appear to be for tracking religious cycles, right? Now, for reasons that are pretty uncertain, the Olmec civilizations appear to have collapsed sometime around the 4th century BCE, right? Uh, there's evidence that Olmec sites suffered from severe depopulation during this period. Some uh, scholars even attribute this for maybe a shift in the climate, you know, a shift in, in food supplies and things like that, but the, the actual reason is not really clearly known. Now, the many civilizations that thrived in South America, two of the most interesting were the Chavin culture, uh, a particularly influential Peruvian civilization, and the Moca, who were famous for their creative pottery uh, and their spectacular tomb known as the Lord of Sipan, right? Uh, around 2000 BCE, people living in northwestern Peru began producing uh, ceramic pottery, and over the next millennium, ceremonial uh, urban centers uh, began to be built with monumental structures, right? Uh, a common feature of these sites were massive earthen brick terrace platforms arranged in three sides, creating a very large distinctive U-shape, often with some kind of pyramid, uh, pyramid stru type structure at the base of the U, right? Now, the most influ influential of these Peruvian cultures uh, and a rough contemporary to the Olmecs were the Chavin culture, right? The name derives from the most famous site, uh, which is called uh, Chavin de Huanta, which was founded sometime around 900 BCE in the highlands of the Andes. Now, Chavin de Huanta is located at a very strategic transportation node near a mountain pass that gives you access to the coastal region which kind of reflects the lively trade and interdependence between the highlands and the cultural people of the Peruvian coast, right? That Peruvian region, right? Now, Chavin de Huantar is, uh, uh, has a large series of stone walls that surround the, uh, uh, the site uh, and the inner enclosure of the sites. And on these walls are depicted larger than life sculpted humanoid heads that spout snouts and fangs, right? Um, in the center is a recessed circular plaza whose sides are lined with relief sculptures of jaguars and uh, creatures with human bodies, but with fangs and clawed hands and feet, right? This is more that animal-human hybrid, which is a common pe feature in Chavin art, uh, and which, again, is believed to depict many of these ideas of supreme deities that, that tend to permeate these uh, American cultures. Now, of course, the Inca are the probably best known civilization that existed in, in uh, South America in this, in this Western region, uh, but they're really a relative latecomer to the scene. I mean, they don't really start building their great empire until sometime between 1200 and 1400 CE, right? Um, between the Chavin and the Inca were dozens of other cultures. Probably the most interesting, though, were the Moca, right? The Moca uh, created a lot of different pieces of artwork and had uh, some pretty epic uh, uh, centers that they built. And archaeologists spent a lot of time looking at their clay pots, right? Clay pots are fantastic pieces of, of archaeology to look at to learn about cultures, right? Because you get to see, first of all, they, they, they're durable, they last. Um, 
They uh, often depict uh, scenes that kind of give you insights into the culture itself. Mocha pots display a creative and playful streak to them, making them really uh, fun to study for a lot of archaeologists, right? Mocha culture itself is based around the high Peruvian valleys and flourished sometime uh, around the time period of 100 CE to 800 CE. They cultivated different crops, right? Things like corn, beans, squash, peppers, avocados, but they also fished uh, fish, crab, crayfish, and mollusks. mollusks. They made use of domesticated llamas, and they also had domesticated guinea pigs and ducks, which were used and raised as an additional food source, right? Um, the wealth and variety uh, uh, of the mocha allowed them to develop very relatively dense urban cultural regions, right? And monumental uh, and sophisticated handcrafts, uh, uh, um, ar architecture and uh, monuments and objects, right? Uh, the Huaca del Sol is a pyramid-like uh, complex that was created by the Mocha, which consists of approximately 130 million adobe bricks, right? That makes it the largest indigenous, indigenous clay structure in the Americas, right? Mocha potters uh, created amazing ceramic vessels with fine, very detailed uh, uh, shapes, uh, rivaling that of, of uh, Roman sculptures of the same time period, right? Uh, one thing in particular that's of interest of the mocha was the way that they formed their their vessels, right? Their things like uh, this uh, pitcher you see here, the dual spout that forms together and and joins and fuses into a single vertical spout, right? Usually you'll have jugs and stuff like that with this on it, but often you'll see things like what you see here. It's used to create some kind of animal or something, some kind of playfulness to this, right? Uh, other pots would have scenes painted on them of, of portrayals of warriors either fighting or even just relaxing or marching in parades, right? Um, there's even some artwork that's kind of interesting that's large beings that have grown limbs and put on armor and are engaged in, in combat, right? In 1987, a spectacular tomb of a high-ranking Mokla man was uncovered. We call it the Lord of Sepan. Uh, he was around 40 years old when he died, but this this tomb consists all kinds of different items, fine gold and silver goods, copper metal work inlaid with turquoise. Uh, he's buried with six other individuals buried around him, probably sacrifices along with a dog and several llamas, right? Uh, nearby this tomb are two additional tombs, one apparently of a, of a priest and another one, according to genetic analysis anyways, appears to be an older relative, perhaps a previous ruler. So there's a lot of archaeology on Mocha culture, which gives us a little bit of insight to see at least this very interesting group uh, of people here in South America.